Hello confident people and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here and you like the content then consider subscribing, just hit that button below. Now this video is very different from a lot of videos that I've done but if you've been following me on Instagram you would have known that I went skiing end of January um, coming into Feb. I thought I'll do this video simply because people started asking me a lot of questions about it so I thought let me do this kind of checklist ski checklist for first timers people that are going skiing for the first time what i think based on the experience that i've had you need to have so getting straight into it if we're going to talk about clothing you need to start off with your base layer this is when it comes to going to a um, colder climate and you're going for skiing you need to have your base layer and the thing with skiing is a lot of the gear the clothing is designed specifically for someone who is going to be active but it's cold here's a classic example so this is a base layer for me and it's a thermal wear base layer so it's it's just ideal it it climatizes i don't know if that's the right word but goes well with your body and by the way, everything that I bought, I bought them from Decathlon, except with the exception of my ski pants from Amazon. So everything I bought simply because I didn't want to spend a lot of money. Skiing is very expensive, not just the whole skiing thing, getting your equipment, getting your gear, all of that is expensive. So if you're going to go and do it and it's something that you're not too sure about, I would advise you go in middle way midway kind of thing not blowing out and spending so much money on expensive gear and then you never go again so yeah this is a classic base layer and i've also i also got one that had a higher neck this was particularly good in like protecting my neck from the cold so it was similar to the last one I'm going to leave a link in the description box of all of these items and you need the same thing for the bottoms as well. So it's like a thermal wear, like almost like long johns, but specifically designed for um, skiing in that you don't want anything that's cotton. If you get material that's cotton for your base layer and it gets wet from when you're sweating, imagine being wet and cold at the same time. It's going to make you colder. So all the base layers are designed to not make you sweat. Yeah, there's a point I want to point out. The point I want to point out. <laughs> Something I want to mention. With my the base layer, when I was in the shop, I saw quite a few three-quarter length base trousers, legging type of things. And in my head, I was like, why do people want to get this? Like, I want something that is the full length so that I'm fully covered. So I bought two fully length or all the way to my ankle um, thermal wear, base layer thermal wear. But when we got there, we realized that you can't have more than your socks in your ski boot at that time. So if you've got any other layers under it, they tell you to pull it up, which now makes sense to me in retrospect. So a lot of those base layers like the thermal undergarment being three quarter length is because you don't want to have anything longer than that because of your socks you're going to need thermal socks as well but that's the only thing that will go in the boot and fit well so you're not uncomfortable when you're on the slopes so that's just a point to note when it comes to skiing the key is layering up that's what I've been told and it's true. You don't feel the cold when you're layered up. So all the material might look thin, but once you've got your layers on, you'll be warm. And all you need really is three layers. So your bottom layer, your middle layer, and your third outer layer. So we had the thermal wear at the bottom. Then I had the fleece layer. Um, this is my fleece that I took once skin. Now what I would advise you to get is a fleece that zips all the way down as you can see this one only zips up at the top so if i wanted to take this off i would have to take it off over my head but if you get one that zips all the way down if you do get hot in the mountains then you can just zip it down to kind of like let air in um i do also have this this is also like a middle layer it's not a fleece but it's so good so i wore this on the second day i think it was because i just realized with the first day that yeah you can't really zip that one all the way down and this this is a little bit more expensive than the fleece but it was excellent and sometimes if you're walking about you can just wear this as a jacket it's that good so it's specifically designed for the slopes i don't know how they designed it but it works well and 
black as you can see you can zip it all the way down and these come with extra pockets so when you're getting your middle layer your fleece layer try and get a fleece that zips all the way down for your outerwear i got this jacket all in decathlon as well and i went for the cheaper options because there's no need in me spending an arm and a leg on something that like i said i might not be needing again so i got this simple white and black jacket they've got a number of different jackets but i just liked the design of this and it looks thin but it's excellent and keeping you warm especially when you've got those other two layers underneath now the thing about the ski jackets is they are designed for everything around the slope so like you'll see on the arm the jacket has a zip here and this tends to be for your ski pass when you're up on the slopes you need to have your ski pass and you don't need to take it out as soon as it detects you it kind of opens well this is for the resort that we were in anyway and then you've got pockets on the side and you've got pockets in here this pocket is this inside this especially designed for your phone you don't really want a pocket any lower for your phone so you don't want a pocket that's down here because what you'll find is you keep hitting it when you're skiing so this is an ideal place for a pocket and it's just an ideal jacket so that's it your bottom layer your middle layer your outer layer and for outer layer bottoms well, i have two this was the one i picked up from decathlon this is the thicker version and i'm telling you i was so hot in this on the slopes it's extremely warm extremely warm so if you're gonna go for something really thick it may be you want to wear it when you've got like really bad conditions this like it's blistering and everything for us on the second day it was sunny throughout and we were really hot when it's sunny on the mountains you get quite hot the first day wasn't that great but the second day was really hot but this was nonetheless really really warm especially because i had the base layer under it the only downside to these trousers is that it doesn't have a zip at the bottom i don't know if you can see it and a lot of ski trousers do have zips at the bottom that it just helps you in getting your ski boot around it so this one was a bit tricky to fiddle with but i got there in the end and then i got another ski pant which was a little bit thinner which i could ski in but i could also wear when i'm not skiing so i bought that one on amazon again i will link that in the description box and that was good because it had pockets everywhere and you find that when you're up on the mountain sometimes you just need to quickly slip things in your pocket or if you're taking your outer gloves off you want to put it somewhere you've got your pockets there so i would highly recommend do you get that i don't even know here it is <laughs> i was gonna say i don't know where the trousers is but this is the other trouser that i got and it's just like i was saying it's got pockets everywhere if we zoom in pockets there and it looks thin but it's very warm as well so all of these things as long as it's designed for snow and skiing it will be warm if you layer up and then i'm going to move on to the shoes because we hired out our equipment you can also hire out your ski boots but outside of skiing you need to have like snow boots and i saw so many different types of snow boots i was recommended different types but i just went with a cheaper option i think the boot i got was like 25 pounds and it was amazing i wore it to there and back you just want something that has good grip and it's extra warm inside this is the boot i got very simple very lightweight i wanted something that was easy to walk in and it just had like it has that strap that comes off and if you look inside it's insulated fully insulated and at the bottom the grip is immaculate so when you're walking around in the snow you're not slipping and sliding especially if it's icy conditions you need something that's going to grip you so you're not sliding around i mentioned before the socks you get thermal socks i got two socks basically the thickness the denseness of the socks are different so these pink socks for instance were a lot thicker than these socks the problem i found is though on the first day of skiing i wore the thinner socks so the not so thick socks and so the boot that i hired was for these socks so the second day when i went back my when i put my foot into the boot with these socks on 
it was a tighter or snugger fit because they try and get you to fit just right. They don't want you to have too much space in your boot because if you have too much space in your boot, then it makes you or leaves you prone to getting cold if your feet have space or something like that. Then you need to have goggles or sunglasses, UV protection, obviously. I just picked up these goggles. They were about 19 99 so, so they're on the cheaper end. Again, reason being I wasn't sure if I'm going back skiing, but look, they're in immaculate condition they're so good it has good grip and it just protects your face from like if it's windy and stuff like that but on the second day i didn't even wear them i just had them on top of my helmet but i saw a lot of people on the slopes with sunglasses so if you've got specially designed sunglasses for the conditions out there you can just wear that instead but i find with the goggles they kind of like protect your whole well, at least half of your face so it's not as cold both myself and my husband both got gloves you need thermal gloves but if we're going back we're both going to get mittens our instructor even said mittens are a lot more warmer than the gloves and you can easily hold your poles with the mittens as opposed to the gloves it can get a little bit clumsy especially if you're just learning you can also get inner gloves so they're a lot thinner than these thicker gloves that you can wear under this and the reason the next time I go back I'm going to do that is sometimes let's say you want to take a picture or something you need to take your gloves off your hands get extremely cold just exposed to the cold but if you've got that thinner inner glove on then it's not exposed to the bare elements. So that's just something to consider. You can get inner gloves as well as the outer gloves, or in my case, as a preference, go with the mittens because we've been advised that mittens are a lot better. For us, the helmet that we wore, you didn't need to wear a hat under it because the helmet not only protected you, but it kept you warm up and all your ears were covered and everything. But a lot of people still do wanna wear hats underneath, like, but get a thinner hat. If that's what you wanna do, get a thin hat so that it can actually fit under your helmet. Don't get a thick hat. You can have a thick hat for, let's say, in your bag, for when you, once you've come up the slopes and you need a hat to cover your head from the cold. But once you're skiing, if you wanna wear a hat, make sure that it's a thinner hat, or you can just wear a head warmer. You also need like um, a face mask. It's kind of like a balaclava, it covers your neck and your face so it's ideal for your neck but then if you get a bit cold you can pull it up to cover your face and even your nose this is the one I got and it was just so perfect so I wore it around my neck and if it got a bit cold just I pulled it up and then I also got this but I never really used it because I had the face mask slash kind of um, scarf thing so I did purchase this but I never did use it it's just something and it's got like the breathing holes in the front to make breathing a lot easier and it goes round your neck now in regards to wearing a scarf on the first day I wore a scarf like my thin scarf from home underneath but on the second day I didn't bother with the scarf because it was so hot so it depends on the weather but if you're going to wear a scarf make sure that it's a thin scarf and quite small so it's not getting caught up while you're skiing and just an obstacle and especially if you've got this I feel like you're not really going to need a scarf because this kind of covers you. Extra things that I suggest that you could get or you should get is a specific backpack for skiing. Now I didn't take a ski backpack I just took my normal backpack and it was a pain because it kept sliding off with the ski backpack it kind of clips in the front so the bag's not moving anywhere you don't need a big bag you just need a small bag maybe to keep a couple of stuff in especially like your water bottle like if you get thirsty and stuff like that and tissues because sometimes you can get a bit sniffly just little things like that and you need a lip balm a really good lip balm we were recommended le bello so i got that as well and it was good I've, i used my carmex as well and i didn't get this but i i can see where it can be needed like um hand warmers they're these things that you buy to warm up your hands or you can even get like warming cases for your phone but really and truly are you going to be taking your phone out and then taking it out the warmer case again you can have it if you want i never got it we never got the waterproof casing because people recommended we get it we didn't we didn't really need it and finally don't forget that you're going to need non-ski clothing when you're off the slopes i hope this video helped i i hope it helped in some way that's just the basic checklist of the things i think you need when you're on a ski trip or a snow trip um, if you found this informative give it a thumbs up and stick around for my other videos just remember that it's one step at a time to becoming confident bye for now guys